So I'm going to kind of walk you guys through how I would teach it in the high school classroom. And then if you have questions, feel free to ask and we'll just kind of go through it. So uh, have you guys ever heard of the term safe sex? Most of them say yes. What does it make you think of right away? Condoms. Hopefully you guys know condoms aren't 100% safe. If I were to take 100 married couples for an entire year and tell them every single time they have sex, they have to use a condom. No other form of birth control, just a condom. At the end of that year, how many of those 100 couples do you think are going to end up pregnant? <laughs> you can cheat. It's, okay. it's about 15. Now, I have students guess all over the board. Some will guess really ridiculously high numbers, and I'm thinking... That's a really high failure rate for something we call safe. Some of them will say two or three and be very confident because they've heard that it's 97% effective. So uh, I usually tell them the effectiveness rate that's always given is the effectiveness in the factory before human use and error is involved. So without you know, any human error, it could be 97% effective. But once human error gets in, it goes down to about 85% effective. So that's the difference if they ever have questions on that. Um, one thing when you're playing this, you know, sometimes you'll have students who want to get into an argument or want to get into the numbers. And this, it's not about that. I mean, it's more about the points. We have it all sourced, but, you know, I would just encourage you not to get into arguments with students ever. <laughs> not worth it. So, 15 out of 100 breaks down to be about 1 out of 6, not exactly, but about 1 out of 6, which is the same odds you get when you roll dice. So in the dice game, they have a 1 out of 6 chance of getting pregnant or getting their girlfriend pregnant. Usually I say you figure out which one you would be. <laughs> so what else can ha happen from having sex besides pregnancy? STDs. STDs, yes. Some of them will know it by STI, sexually transmitted infection. That's what the medical community has changed it to. Generally, I still say STD when I play this because they're familiar with it. So if, if they bring up STI, you can say or STI. Uh, the main difference is that the STI turns into an STD, so it always starts out as an infection and it ends up as a disease. That's really the big difference. Uh, out of all sexually active teenagers, and that's, this is where I stop with them, and I say, how many teenagers do you think are sexually active? And I love asking this in the middle school, because what do they usually guess? 90%. 100%, <laughs> yeah. They think all high schoolers are having sex. And I love, often I'll be in a middle school in the morning and a high school in the afternoon, and so I'll go from middle school to a high school classroom, and I'll say, do you guys want to know what the middle schoolers said? And I'll tell them, they think you're all having sex, and they think that's hilarious, and oh my gosh, you know. Some of them will say, when I was in middle school, I thought the same thing. But the reality is less than half of high schoolers are having sex. And that is just a huge message I really try to let them know, because so many of them are under a false impression, just like a lot of adults are, that everybody's doing it. And sometimes we'll talk about, why do adults think everybody's doing it? It's because of the movies, it's yeah. because of the music, it's because of how they dress, all of these things. And when I ask the middle schoolers, why did you guys guess such a high percentage? They always say, we hear the high schoolers talking about it. So I'll tell the high schoolers that you guys must be talking about sex a lot because these middle schoolers are hearing it and thinking you're having it. And so I tell the middle schoolers, just because they're talking about it, does that mean they're having it? Of course not. You know, so we break down that the majority of high schoolers are not having sex, but of the ones who are, because they are, there are some who are, how many are going to end up with an STD? 25%, 1 out of 4. So usually in a classroom, I'll go around and I'll actually count and say, 1, 2, 3, you have an STD, just to make it more real. And it's usually 5 or 6 kids in just a small little classroom will end up with an STD. Can you always tell just by looking at a person if they have an STD? Of course not. Because nobody talks about it, it's easy to think nobody has it. But the reality is one out of four people who's having sex has an STD. Pretty major. One thing to know, less than half of high schoolers are having sex, but the number increases from freshman to senior year which makes sense, and that surprises none of the high schoolers. So freshman, sophomore year, it's fairly low, and it starts increasing to about 60% by senior year. And a lot of that has to do with access to cars, later curfews, you know, alcohol, stuff like that. Okay, in the dice game, I give them a one out of six chance for getting an STD. In real life, it's one out of four, so I'm actually giving them better odds, so I make sure I tell them that. 
Uh, last thing that can happen from having sex is a broken heart. And a lot of times they'll never think of that. They'll think of pregnancy right away, they'll think of STDs, broken heart's kind of the last thing on their mind. I've had students say, well that only happens to girls. <laughs> so then we talk about how do guys have feelings? Do guys get attached? Have any of you ever seen a guy just broken hearted over a girl? They all have. So, you know. Um, out of all sexually active teenagers, how many do you think are going to end up with a broken heart? And the numbers vary. A lot of times they'll guess high percentages. I don't have a specific statistic for that one. The other <coughs> two I can actually source, you know, from a credible source. This one, just my opinion, I tell them, probably most, if not all, will end up with a broken heart. And the reason is that most of them won't end up together. And I'll tell them, in my high school, the kids I knew were having sex, none of them ended up together. Um, I do recognize that some people met in high school, they're married years later, some of them have parents who fit into that category, but I always tell them that's rare, that's the exception, the majority don't. So you're taking all five parts of yourself, because we talk about how we're physical, intellectual, emotional, social, and spiritual, you're bonding them with another person, and then you're breaking up. There's going to be a heartbreak there. And we talk about how heartbreaks are a really big deal, they can lead to depression, they can lead to suicide. Suicide is one of the leading causes of death among young people. Unfortunately, most of the schools I go to, they've had a suicide at least in the last four years from someone in their school. So, you know, it's close to their heart. They know what I'm talking about. In the dice game, I give them a one out of six chance of getting their heart broken. In real life, it's probably more like five out of six, but I'm giving them really mm -hmm. good odds. So, let's say a person starts having sex at the age of 16, and I'm just picking a random number. What is the average age someone in our country gets married? 25. 25, 25. yes. Yeah. And they'll guess all sorts. I've had, it so surprises me, kids will say, 16, 18. I'm like, who do you know that's married? <laughs> Weird. But 25. So how many years is there between 16 and 25? Nine. nine years. So for the dice game, they're going to roll the dice nine times to represent each year of sexual activity. If they roll a one, they'll pick up a baby card, they got pregnant, or they got their girlfriend pregnant. I need to laminate those, that's why they look like that. Uh, if they roll a two, they'll pick up an STD card, they contracted a sexually transmitted disease. And if they roll a three, they'll pick up a broken heart card, they got their heart broken. If they roll a four, five, or six, they're in the clear, nothing happens. How many times do they roll? Nine, Nine times. So I'll have you guys all play, and then... We can discuss so once per year. Really like Only three. once. Yeah, right, right. And they're having Did you get a lot of bad stuff? Oh, like, this is an extra dice. Yeah. Oh, oh no. Oh, that's we have dice in our games. That's okay. okay. So start rolling. I'll kind of throw you the cards. You get an STD. You're good. Oh. Oh. Wait, what did Joan get? STD. Oh, okay. And we'll go over each one. So roll eight more times. Two. Okay. Yeah, Joan, what did you end up getting? Oh, wow. I had genital warts, which is HPV, gonorrhea, and syphilis. And then a baby, a baby and two broken hearts. Okay. Whoa. So, and I wrote on the back of this, if you flip it over, once you have the person share what they got, there's a whole bunch of different facts that you can share. So for your baby, on average, it costs about $11,000 to raise a baby for one year just for the basics. So then I'll ask them, do you have $11,000 sitting around ready to throw at a baby? Of course not. Two broken hearts. That tells me you're probably raising that baby on your own because the guy took off. Then genital warts, so that's HPV. It's not curable. It's a virus. Uh, what was the second one? Gonorrhea. Gonorrhea. That 